I came in on my, on my time you know off to I help tell you what, your bar. Why don't you just sit down over there? She's back here cleaning your bar, and you disrespect her? I mean, this makes no sense no, to me, to, Terry. Really We're getting, trying to help you I'm really you getting here. tired of the way you What are you talking about? Your business is about to fail. They're trying to help you. Why are you disrespecting them with this? What's up guys, it's your boy Alan again, back with another video, and today we're going to watch another episode of Bar Rescue. But before we start, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, and uh, let's go check this out. Joe, we're going back to its second base. There it is, second base. First of all, the sign isn't even lit. Are you kidding me? Why is the sign not lit? We talked about this over and over. We've seen signs that are not well lit and that can create a lot of problems when people are trying to look for the place. Like, why is the sign not on at all? Is this place even open right now? I swear to you, that front of this bar was appealing when we left, was it not? Yeah, that's the whole point. He put up that giant sign and those logos on the side, so it's very visible on the side of the road. That was the whole purpose. Why are they not utilizing it? It must suck to see all that work you put in went to when you left, huh? Look at that, Joe. No uniform anymore. BYO. They went back to the bikinis? Why do they... It didn't work before. Why would you go back to doing it? The uniforms that John chose also had sex appeal, but at the same time, it didn't objectify the employees. I've already rescued this bar, and I've empowered Gary to run the day-to-day -day operations. So I want to sit in the SUV with Harry and watch Recon. Whoa, so this one is not a surprise visit. Most of the Bar Rescue um, episodes, the owner is not aware that they're gonna do Recon. They usually film during a period of days and then they would tell them that John could show up at any moment. Like the Recon is usually a surprise, but in this case, the owner is with them. Like they know that these experts are going in to check on the bar. Let me catch up a little bit. So when I left, we empowered Gary. Right. And you were gonna step back and let him take control. Right. right, which I did. And I understand sales went up like four. <laughs> you did? I highly doubt it's Gary's idea to go back to the swimsuits. And then when did it turn? When there was like five powerhouse sports bars that moved in the area, it just made it extremely hard for us to uh, compete. Yeah, in the first rescue, they had no competition. Five different new sports bars opened around the neighborhood. Once you have competition, you gotta change your game up. You gotta offer something that nobody else is offering. So let's run through the staff. I wanna see who's still here and who isn't. There's Gary. This is about nine o'clock at night. You'd think he'd be out in the room, wouldn't you? So what is with him? He's at a... Yeah, this is 9 p.m. You shouldn't be doing admin work at 9 p.m. That's when it's starting to get busy. You should be on the floor. Ray is still kitchen manager. There's Sarah. So she was here when I was here. Yep, so Crystal was here when I was here. So she uh, also is a bartender. So who's that? I'm not sure. I don't know. How do you not know your own employees? <laughs> I know that you're supposed to do a hands-off approach, but there's not that many employees here. How do you not know who they are? Fortunately, I've done my homework. I'm going to introduce Terry to his own staff. Well, her name is Jolene. She's one of the new bartenders. Nice smile. Yeah. That's funny that... John actually knows the staff more than him. The owner... Ugh. That's Renee. She's also a new bartender. And that's Nikki. You have three people that John had to introduce? Are you kidding me? He, he, that's most of the current staff right now. As John and Terry observe from the SUV. We're gonna get started here. Do you have a cocktail menu? Um, we don't. <laughs> you don't have a cocktail menu? No, we have oh. No cocktail menu. This place looks like what it was before the rescue. It's supposed to be a sports bar. Where are the TVs? How, there's nothing sports bar about this place. It looks like this place just went back to the original bikini bar concept. It's been so long. Don't you have a cocktail? Remember the cocktail menu that we did? Do we still have the menu? Yeah. I can make you one of them. Let's do it. No menu? You got rid of your cocktail menu. How do you people know what to order? Like, you're just gonna offer the basic vodka cran, Jack and Coke, screwdriver, mimosas, and then beers, and how does this place offer anything more than a dive bar at this point? Do it. Which one? See what you remember. Do you wanna do the grand margarita? Because that's one of our signature drinks. Nip snap. She's approachable. And I'm glad to hear that she's the one. She remembers the drinks. So they still know how to make it, and they can make it, so 
why did they get rid of the cocktail menu? I, I don't understand. We're doing training, but we lost all of those drinks and such. And I've got to tell you, they gave us an identity. But that's not the color of a margarita by any means. They went back. <laughs> Is that sweet and sour mix? Do you have the other menu, the second base menu? Yeah, but you're not going to be able to get anything off of it. He doesn't make it anymore. I can really go. What happened to this place? They were doing so well. They paid off their debt. I understand there's competition in the neighborhood, but you can't make yourself more of a presence by taking things away. You should be either modifying or adding more options. For a pastrami sandwich. We're out of pastrami. Do you have like a turkey sandwich? No, we're out Come of turkey. Come on. Just no food? How do you run out of these things? Pastrami you make in bulk. You can't just like suddenly run out. Like you can see when it's about to run out. And how do you not have turkey? Turkey could have been cooked by the morning crew and it'll be ready by dinner time. That's not my call. Best ordinary. Wow, like you can tell she's super frustrated. That's like the most frustrating in the world when you know there's something that needs to be done, but you don't have the authority to do anything about it. You got five other sports bars that are around you. If you don't have food, and you don't have cocktails. Like, what are you offering that the other places aren't? The cocktail program is gone. The menus are gone. You're saying to me that these competitors took it away from you. I'm suggesting you gave it to them. What is that? <laughs> That's true. They must have saw the show and <laughs> just basically copied their concept and made it their own. But it doesn't explain why would you take things away. Like, how are you going to compete against your competition by removing what gave you your identity. Yeah. The yeah. barbecue menu, I know you see. I know, they still want to see it. I don't... Yeah, but I don't have okay. nothing. Okay, thank you. What happened? I can understand. I can understand. He's the... He was from the original rescue. And, and he... what's going on here? I've seen better days. Me too. What happened? I still couldn't have control of decisions of what I wanted to do. Is that true? That's... Wow, so he's not telling us something. They really went back to the same problems. He's not giving him any control. As a manager, Terry believes that he knows what he's doing. It's like, no matter what. Okay, so when you yell at me because this beer is not cold enough, then you Was I yelling at you? Not yet, you're not. Oh my God, it's not like the first rescue where they were frustrated and they didn't know what they were doing wrong. Everyone here knows what's going on. They know why the competition is beating them. How do you not have cold beer? You're a sports bar. It's pretty bad. You see the bubbles in it? Nope. Yeah, it's gone flat because it's too warm. It has to be cold to retain the carbon dioxide. That's the only way that carbonation stays inside solution. It has to be kept in a form called carbonic acid. And the warmer you have the liquid, the less likely the carbonic acid can stay in solution in the liquid. So it comes up and that's what makes it flat. Everything that you taught them, I loved it. But when I hear no one's gonna buy that crap, just sell shots. That is not even close to being true. Whoa, you smell it? Yeah, kind of used to the smell by now. Well, it's causing the smell. They remodeled this place. Like, are they spilling beer and not cleaning it up? Like, how does something like this happen? Look at the filth in this place. And this is what Gary is doing to run this place. Dude, all that dust, it, it can fall on someone's drink or food. This is gross. It's clearly visible. This is not like repairing a toilet that was broken where you have to call professionals to fix. Now you can clearly see the dust up there and wipe it away yourself. Hi, Gary. How are you doing, John? What the f happened? Went south. This is go south? What happened? Jeez, did you see that? How does it build up that much dust and nobody... That, Earlier, they were looking at the, the beams on the ceiling, but this is right next to the guest's face. Man, bigger sports bars moved in as neighbors. So there was bigger sports bars. Did they have cocktail programs? Possibility. They yes, of course they did. That's why they're doing better than you guys. It's because they copied John's concept of your place. They do. Do you? No. But you did, didn't you? We did. Did they have good food menus? Real good food menus. Do you? No. But you did, didn't you? Yep. Why did they... <laughs> this is the craziest thing I've seen, where the competition started off as watered-down clones of this place, and for some reason, rather than embrace it, they just got rid of everything that made them who they were, and why they were successful. So why did all this stuff go away? 
no money to fix it. You think they took your customers, or do you think you gave them to them? I watched you sit on your ass tonight in that back room. Where's Damn, like, what happened to him? He was, like, the driving force in the first rescue, and now he looks defeated and doesn't care. He's got the bookkeeping, he's got the inventory, he's got the shift changes. Is that why nobody knows how to make any drinks? Is that why our beer sucks? Is that why this place still smells? Because Gary doesn't have the time? Yeah, it's like removing the cocktail menu isn't gonna give him more time to do the books. Also, removing the kitchen items, he's not working behind the kitchen. I mean, what is he gonna do? He doesn't know how to fix a kegerator. But he can clean a freaking life fixture. Then we have clean life fixtures and still warm beer. But it's an effort. That's what I was saying, like dusting the lights, that's like opening side work. I work in places where you have to dust the lamps every day. It doesn't take that much time. Where is this stench coming from? Under the floor again? I'm guessing there's mice, filth, bacteria, and water underneath that floor. Sorry. This is like the same bar that we saw in the first rescue. I've seen people change their name back after John Taffer leaves, but this, like th the same problems are coming back. Sorry, this is you know it. The floor stinks, I can smell it. That is the most disgusting I have. Dude, that is, you gotta wipe that thing clean every night. That scum, it takes weeks if not months to build up. This is inexcusable, it doesn't take that long to clean these beer drains. Look at that. Look at it all dripping down here, you can see it. You like it? There you go, man, right where it belongs. Jeez, how does this happen? Like. Yes, the, the kegs might be warm, but what does that have to do with wiping down the drains? It only takes a few seconds. I want to cut this floor open. Oh. What is happening? Is this, something's rotting under there again? That's what's under this floor. Run off from that drain run off from this. That's why your freaking bar stinks. The beer, the rancid beer is going into the floor? How does that happen? This, so this is actually different than what happened in the first rescue. This is a new problem. It just happened to happen in the same place. And that might save your ass in the end, but it doesn't save you tonight. You're a brick. Damn. <laughs> Even that thing was holding on to a thread. What happened? After he uh, left, Gary knocked that down. Do you want to be here? Yeah, I want to be here. That's how you show it? It's frustration. Yeah, you got to keep your cool, destroying your own property. And when things are already falling apart, it's not going to fix the problem, obviously. Who cleaned up last night? Would one of you guys lift up that beer drain for me? It's exactly how I left it. Are you kidding me? He just told them that it was dirty and they didn't even, nobody cleaned it. Like I said before, it's not that hard to clean a beer drain. You just pour hot water and just wipe it. Probably takes like a minute at most, especially one that's that small. Terry, what do you expect? Me to come here, fix this for you when you do nothing? You didn't even tell them to clean up. You know I'm gonna come here today and scream about this, right? Yes, you, I mean, they all met him before. I'm also assuming that they've seen the show. And this is on its, what season is this? Fourth season. We all know he's gonna yell at people, but these guys experienced it firsthand already. This is your business. Why don't you support I'm doing. it? I, I'm trying. It paid off how much of your debt? 100,000? So you didn't clean. You didn't keep the programs in place. It's no better than when I was here two years ago, is it? It's almost identical. It's insane, like, this is almost like a replica of the original bar before it was rescued. I find it personally offensive that you could take something that is so successful that I gave you and so disrespect it. I'm not around. Gary but runs the bar. Now you're focusing on me. I, I come to my business. not around. Why would you not? How hard is it just to walk around here every now and then and just take a look? I made it a point to look in my employees' eyes, to know them. Did he do that? No. And disposable. And he was trying to bring girls in on my shift from other places on, as a surprise to try to move me out. I don't... What? Why would you do that? What kind of sick... This doesn't make any sense. Why would you hire and train people just to treat them, they're disposable and they're... What kind of... Like, this is inhumane. Like, why would you treat people that work for you like this? 
My veteran girls feel like this girl's gonna be gone in a month, so why fully train her? You can ask any one of the girls, do they know him or do, does he know them? It, they'll all have the same answer. I've never met Terry. He's not here every day. <gasps> She's never even met him? So he doesn't even visit the bar, but they're hiring people that Terry is trying to get rid of? How does the interview process work here? How can you walk into a place that you're never at and be like, well, you need to do this, this, and this, and that's gonna fix the bar. Keep asking questions when they admittedly don't know me. So you're blaming them? Because they don't know I'm you? I'm blaming you. What? Why is it her, why is it the employee's initiative to meet the owner? That makes no sense. So disconnected with the realities of making employees happy. I'm doing that with my other bar right now. Your other bar, huh? That's why you have no money. You ever think, Gary, that he took money from this bar and put it in the other ones? Wait, I didn't know that he had another bar? He had multiple... He's funneling money out of this place for his other projects. Like, what's going on here? This is super shady. You know it? Yeah, I do. So there we go. So Gary, he you. You're here right now because you want your revenues to go up 400% again. Well, who doesn't? Dude, so they're not... So he sees this place primarily as a source of funds for these other places. And he doesn't give a crap about anyone here. He's letting this place fall apart because he never had any long-term commitment to this place. You suck it dry, then call me to come back a second time and bail you out. You're delusional. And if I'm, de right. if I'm delusional, just stop talking to me. You do not need to talk to a delusional guy. <sighs> this is insane. <laughs> John just gifted you this gold mine. And the only thing you got out of it was that it was just to pay off the debt. And that's it. And once that was done, you didn't even see any further purpose for this place to exist, except to leech off of for the other bars. Now I'm gonna give him a last chance. I wanna see if he'll step up and help me rescue his bar. If he does, he's rescuable. I don't see how his voice doesn't go out as loud as he screams. <laughs> that is true. A lot of people say that, that he only screams on TV, but realistically, like if he screamed like that, just for show, how does he hold his voice for the whole week when they film this? Not working without gloves or bleach. Are you kidding me? Well, first of all, you should be, that's not the right attire to be cleaning stuff. Straight bleach. I'm not doing it. No washing with a concoction full of stuff. Oh, they got Lisa Marie? So this episode has two guest mixologists? We gotta take everything apart and clean it from the top to bottom. We need some disinfecting cleaning supplies, okay? So can you run to the store and get that for us? I can. Okay, thank you. Everybody come. They don't have cleaning supplies right now? Are you kidding? They, they don't even have the things they need to clean this. That they have to go to the store to get it right now. This is the grossest thing I have ever seen in my entire life. It takes two seconds to pull this off and wipe this down. And if you do that every single night, this never has a chance to build up. Yeah, that's months of neglect. Like I said before, it's not that hard to clean. If you're having this kind of problem, which looks like worms or something, it takes two What the heck? How is it that thick? They need to have a piece of metal to scrape it off? I've never seen anything like this. This has to be years of neglect. Those gloves up. She's helping them clean. All right. Why don't you go ahead and throw on a pair and get back here? Are you gonna be rude like John? Are you kidding me? You're gonna let Lisa Marie clean your bar and you're just gonna watch? This guy is so entitled. She's literally here to help you and you're not even like pitching in. She's the mixologist. She's not supposed to be cleaning. I'm not trying to be rude. I'm oh, just back here. there's a certain here. way to talk to me. I'm not gonna put up with it. I'm back here cleaning your bar. Hey, well, I appreciate it. I came Thank in on my, on my time you know off what? to I'll help tell clean you your what. bar. Why don't you just sit down over there? What is wrong with him? She's supposed to be teaching cocktails, not cleaning your bar. You should be thankful that she's helping out. Why are you being so rude to her? Lisa Marie is Friday's number one trainer in America. She's back here cleaning your bar, and you disrespect her? I mean, this makes no you sense to me, Gary. Really We're getting, trying to help I'm really you getting here. getting tired of the way you What are you talking about? Your business is about to fail. They're trying to help you. Why are you disrespecting them like this? What a yeah. ass. I bet you're a bigger 
the difference is, I have success. And the only success you had, this, I this, gave to you, and now I that? take it away. This this is your uh, why is, at this point, John Taffer should just leave. This is unacceptable. Why would you, this guy doesn't even want to be helped. What's wrong with him? I don't want to do this. Okay, so, it's getting a little out of hand. You know what? I'm getting no support from you whatsoever, but you need to tell me right now. Hey. What are you talking about? No support? You just kicked out Lisa Maria and John because they're just, hey, why don't you pitch in too? <laughs> you have a, a consultant that's w helping you clean the bar. Is that too much ass just to wipe down your own bar? What's going on? This is, he's like worse than he was on the first rescue. If the owner's not doing it, then why are we? still has the same attitude that he did last time. Is he doing it on purpose or is he just really stupid? He's really, he's just really stupid. He's really yeah, like, this can't be an act for TV. Just based on this, what they've said about him and, geez, like, he really is this stupid. How did he end up having multiple bars? Does he have, like, rich parents or something? One of my favorites is the Grand Margarita. We're gonna do an ounce and a half of tequila. What else am I putting in here? Wow, they have to retrain on all the drinks from the first rescue. Pepperoni, a little bit of sauce. We're gonna pop this one right in the oven. That's kind of heat. That pizza oven, the top part was broke. Did you tell them that the top of the oven was busted? It's a long time. A long time. Are you serious? Pizza should be, it's like one of the highest profit margins of any food items. How do you have a, you know how many places wish they had a pizza oven? So this thing broken, it's broken. Like, they can't even make this food. Time ago. Yeah, but yeah. But why wasn't it fixed? It's always been a money issue. We had a huge debt. Yes. So I plan on reinvesting. If he's going to do what he's doing. Like I said, pizza makes money at a very low cost. You fix it so you can make more pizza, and then you make more pizza, you can make more money. Like, how does he. I don't understand how this guy thinks. Like, this thing is a huge asset. Eat it like a piece of pizza, however you guys want to get into it. What do you think, right? It's good. Excellent. It's good. Yeah. Let's get ready for stress test. Tonight I saw a slight interest from Perry and Trent. Oh, they turned on the lights, so it works. Why didn't they turn it on when John was visiting? Food order, so figure it out. Yeah, right. You cook the paper on it. You know what would happen if somebody ate this? How? Oh my god. This guy's been working here for at least two years because he was on the first rescue. How do you make a mistake like this? We gotta pick up speed, guys. This room is not served. No drink, no drink, no drink, no drink. How many people yeah. think they can walk across the street and get a drink and get back here faster than that? They're four bartenders. Why are the drinks taking so long? Right now, we're losing moments and we're losing dollars. So I'm gonna count it with you, ready? One and two and three and four and five and six. Can I get... She's getting a lesson in free pouring in the middle of the pressure test. The bartenders don't even know how to pour. This bartender was learning the drinks, but she herself hasn't even learned how to pour yet. I'll give you this order. I'm gonna save you the I'll give you that order when you're done with the other one. Okay. Why are you doing that? You're, you can't go behind the bar and just interrupt your bartenders just to give them a ticket. Did this guy learn nothing in the past two years? How does this guy have multiple bars? Ladies, watch our port. I've never seen a bar send back so many drinks because there was too much booze in it. That one's too weak, that one's too strong. Let's make them a- None of these bartenders are trained. I'm talking about basic training. I don't even know what to say. This is a pressure test and they can't even free pour correctly. This is one of the worst stress tests. The tickets that we're running 15 to 20 minute ticket times. And this is definitely- Perry doesn't care. Yeah, Perry just doesn't seem to give a about anything. <laughs> They've done a stress test before. How do you perform worse on this stress test than you originally did in the first rescue? Like, you went through it before. You realize not one of these bartenders can make one drink. Why would you put a staff out there that doesn't know what they're doing and not do anything about it? Yeah, well, the problem is I haven't been here and I don't even know half the girls. So. You don't even know half the girls? What is the interview process like? Are you just picking random girls from the street and asking them if they want a job? They have no bartending experience. Zero. How do you think we did? This is all new to me again. Like we ha I haven't did those drinks in over two years. It was, it was hard for me. Yes, sir. I know some of these bartenders were from the first rescue, so they should, they've already made these drinks before. 
they made them when it was busy and successful. So not only are the new bartenders completely no bartending experience, the veteran ones from the first rescue forgot everything that John and his experts have taught them from the original rescue. 80% of the bars I've rescued are successful. Still open and making money. The bar I'm running right now, we've doubled in sales. OC Weekly just ranked us as the best bikini bar in Orange so County. So then why are you failing? Why? Yes! What? <laughs> why are you so successful with these other bars? And why is this one failing so miserably? Like, they're doing worse than they did the first time. What's going on here? Is it just all this shady money funneling that's causing this? I've never given anybody a second chance. You know how many bars would beg for me to be there tonight? So I'm gonna make sure that uh, we stick to the menu this time. We stick to the cleanliness. The menu that they serve today is the same menu that he gave you two years ago. You could have went back to it at any point. You didn't need John to come back a second time to remind you of what are in those menus. I don't believe in you at all. You're hustling me for a remodel. You're saying what you need to say and she can get your hand in my pocket. If I wasn't here with my checkbook, would he be doing this right now? Even though John is here with his checkbook, he's still not doing anything. I mean, this guy had Lisa Marie scrubbing the bar while he's just watching. She wasn't here to clean the bar. She was here to train the girls on how to make the drinks. This right here is my budget, $100,000. And I'm putting in a dance floor. I'm blowing out the plumbing. I'm blowing out these beer coolers. I'm putting a $20,000 walk-in in the back. He's gonna build them a walk-in? This infrastructure is going to be completely new. What were your gross sales last year? It was about 330000 Had you put 5% aside, you'd have roughly $15,000 for maintenance and repairs. But you didn't do that. So, so, so they were making money. They just didn't put any money to the side to fix anything. So where is this money going? I'm going to put an additional $100,000 in your bar on top of what I've done. But I will only do it if you put in $30,000, which is less than the $33,000 you should have put in the last two years at sixteen. Why is John helping him? Ugh. It's only for the employees, but if he's not going to take care of this place when John leaves, the employees are going to have to find new jobs anyways. This is like really frustrating to watch. I'll give you a few minutes to think about it. He's not giving me much time. 30000 is just not that easy to come up with. $30,000 isn't that much. He gave me a day. I don't have time. You just bragged on how much money your other bars make. How do you not have $30,000 for emergencies or anything? Where's this money going? Now it's D-Day. He needs to step up and prove himself, or I'm not going to rescue this bar. And write you a check. But it won't be any good. This guy is super shady. How do you have so many bars and they're all, you know, they're making money. Like this place is also making money. It just money wasn't getting put back for repairs and maintenance. Something is very, very shady here. How do you own so many bars and not even have $30,000 at hand for something like this? Do you believe that he can't come up with this money? He just won't. Let's get out of here, guys. It's over. Because I don't trust you. Because you are a slime bucket. I don't understand what's going on here. How is the second rescue worse than it was in the original rescue? This is insane. What's wrong with him? It's not that he didn't learn anything from the first rescue. I honestly think he's gotten worse. One of the best concepts I've ever done, and he totally f***ed it up. If I had the money, I would do it. You do have the money. You're hiding it. He's hiding something. John is about to give you a freaking walk-in cooler. You know how expensive that is? How much construction you need to do something like that? How do you not have $30,000? You're just bragging about all these... You have all these other successful bars, and you don't have $30,000. Let's go, guys. If you ran your bar right, you would have had the money. Well, it's a great concept, but I don't have the money, guys. I don't think it's gonna happen. You could, this guy's a horrible liar. I feel so bad for all the workers here. I had fire again, and, and that spark just got blown out. I don't blame John. I'm surprised he went as far as he did. I'm like, I'm not in any sense surprised that John walked away, and I'm not in any sense surprised that Terry told him I don't have the money. 
how is the end of like this is I'm also surprised John went this far. This concept was amazing and John already bought all the materials for it. Just what a waste of time and money and resources for the bar rescue team to even show up here. He's not gonna step up for his own future. I'm not gonna step up for his future either. My money will help somebody else far more than it'll help Terry. <laughs> what a depressing episode. This part was singularly taken down by the owner and none of the employees deserve this. Hey, if you enjoyed that, don't forget to check out these other videos as well. And please leave on the comment section on what videos I should react to next. And if you haven't done so already, don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys on the next one.